Hello, I am Dr. Amitesh Kumar Chatterjee, a consultant diabetologist practicing at Jalpaiguri, West Bengal. We will be discussing today about a case of type 2 diabetes with multiple comorbidities and its management. Mr. AB, a 58 year old patient with history of type 2 diabetes mellitus since six, four years. He is also having obesity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and obstructive sleep apnea. On physical examination of this patient, the BMI was found to be stable at 32 kg per meter square. Blood pressure was measured to be 130 upon 82 millimeter mercury, and heart rate was 60 beats per minute. On laboratory measurement, his HbA1c was 8.3%, estimated glomerular filtration rate 70 ml per minute, low density lipoprotein 69 milligram per deciliter, HDL 35 milligram per deciliter, triglyceride 250 milligram per deciliter, and his AST level was 70 unit per liter, while ALT level was 100 unit per liter. This patient was on several medications, namely metformin 1000 milligram twice daily, lisinopril 40 milligram once daily, metoprolol extended release 100 milligram once daily, atorvastatin 40 milligram once daily, and last but not the least, aspirin 81 milligram once daily. Now, as per the patient profile, he has a short duration of type 2 diabetes mellitus. He is young and has no major comorbidities with no major complication that would reduce his lifespan. He is at low risk of hypoglycemia. He would benefit from a more stringent goal. However, he is also obese. He is hypertensive and hyperlipidemic, as I have already mentioned, and having obstructive sleep apnea disorder. Now, as per ADA recommendation, less than 7% A1C level is a reasonable goal for most non-pregnant adults. In addition to efficacy, following considerations predominate in determining pharmacotherapy for him, such as risk of hypoglycemia, weight loss or minimize weight gain, heart failure, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, and obviously the cost. Mr. AB is willing to start another medication, but at the same time, he is concerned because he sometimes forgets to take his pills and fears that additional pills will only make the situation worse. He doesn't want to have injectable therapy, and that is a very predominant condition in our country. Fix those combinations, may improve patient adherence by once daily dosing, less complex treatment regimens, fewer pills, and improved side effect profile as well as adherence. Now we all know people with type 2 diabetes mellitus commonly live with multiple comorbidities, among which hypertension, and cardiovascular disease are the most common. Monotherapy cannot address these multiple defects and often leads to failure to maintain glycemic control over time. Current diabetes guidelines encourage early adoption of oral combination uh, leading to a successful therapy 
while simultaneously emphasizing the importance of individualized treatment. Now, ADA recommendation highlights that in appropriate high-risk individuals with established type 2 diabetes mellitus, the decision to treat with GLP-1 receptor agonist or SGLT2 inhibitor to reduce major adverse cardiovascular events, hospitalization for heart failure, cardiovascular death, or CKD progression should be considered independently of baseline HbA1c or individualized HbA1c target. Empagliflogin-linagliptin combination is available as first-in-class treatment in SGLT2 inhibitor and DPP4 inhibitor combination group of drugs. SGLT2 inhibitor, as we all know, is a class of novel oral glucose lowering agents that mediates glucose lowering action by increasing urinary glucose excretion via inhibition of the sodium glucose co-transporter 2 in the proximal tubule of the kidney. The salutary effect is its ability to act independent of insulin secretion and action and render it suitable to administer at any stage of the disease course. This is one of the beauty of this particular agent. DPP-4 inhibitor exerts its glucose lowering effect by the elevation of incretin hormones. To be more precise, endogenous incretin hormones and subsequent augmentation of the glucose dependent insulin secretion and inhibition of glucagon release. Combination of these agents has potential to show the additive glycemic control due to their complementary effects of action. Empagliflogin cardiovascular outcome event trial in type 2 diabetes mellitus patient, which is known as EMPAREG outcome trial, reported that three-point MACE outcome occurred in a significantly lower percentage, where the hazards ratio of 0.86 and confidence interval is 0.74 to 0.99, having the p-value of 0.04 in the empagliflogin arm compared to placebo on top of standard of care for the same. In addition, cardiovascular safety of linagliptin, that is the DPP-4 inhibitor in uh, discussion, was further elucidated in Carmelina and Carolina trial. HbA1c decrements by empagliflogin linagliptin combination of 25 milligram and 5 milligram respectively has demonstrated 1.81% HbA1c reduction at HbA1c baseline greater than or equal to 8.5% at 24 weeks in metformin treated groups. The benefits on glycemic control were maintained at week 52 in metformin-treated groups, and a higher percentage of patients achieving HbA1c less than 7% were reported for combinations. The combination offers a suitable component in strategy to achieve target HbA1c without increased risk of hypoglycemia, as well as weight gain with improvement in overall lipid profile. A reduction in the incidence of genital infections associated with SGLT2 inhibitor has been reported when a DPV4 inhibitor is added, perhaps because of a better glucose control although other possible mechanisms remain to be investigated. 
So in summary, empagliflozin and linagliptin combination provides a robust HbA1 reduction and two to four times higher odds of patients reaching the goal HbA1c compared to individual agents with low hypoglycemia risk. Thank you very much.